The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Thanks so much for kicking off your trading week, what week right here with me. And we got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And you got markets this morning in the negative. We get the S&Ps. Now, you get a little bit of a rollover here on the futures. Okay, so we're trading at 51.75. You technically were at a price point of 51.30. But actually, you get the futures trading a little bit lower. You're negative by 17 points right now. We got negative action to kick things off, and that is off of the highs that we had last week. Quite the acceleration towards the end of Friday, though. How about NVIDIA? Could be uh, a little bit of a glimpse of the angst of some of the bubblicious prices that we got in this market. You're talking about NVIDIA. Trades from 974 down $100. For some context here, folks, NVIDIA's got 2.5 billion shares outstanding. $100 is a quarter trillion dollar hit to this equity intraday, intraday on Friday. Uh, no real alarming news or anything. You just had some selling. Looks like we might not make it to 1,000, at least just yet. Nonetheless, NVIDIA shares are trading down about $7 in the pre-market to 869. As I mentioned, S&P is negative. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by about half a percent. Dow in the negative as well, about 135 points in the red at 39,058 in the Russell right now, negative by three points as well. How about Bitcoin? It's not ending yet for Bitcoin though, 73,200. Look at that acceleration, man. From where we were at about three in the morning, 73,200 was the uh, high made at about 7.45 a.m. this morning. We're just under that price point. Crew this morning with a 77 handle, we're trading at 77.69. Gold, quite a week last week. We'll see if it can hang on to some of the gains that it had. You made it up to a 2200 price point last Friday. We're trading at 2183, negative by about $2. You jump over to silver, positive by about five pennies, 2460. We take a look at notes and bonds. Now, we got an important week, man. We got CPI, the main event of the week, on Tuesday morning, tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m. You're looking for a number of 0.4% month over month on the headline, 0.3% on the core. We'll get into some of those numbers, but it's going to be an important one. We get CPI, we get PPI, we get retail sales as well this week. And we are now just nine days out from the next Federal Reserve meeting. That meeting taking place next Wednesday, March 20th, my birthday. Put it on the calendar. Uh, the tenure right now, basically flat, 111.24. You're talking about a 10-year yield. We come into the week at 4.08%. The CPI is an important one tomorrow, and it's especially important considering how it's going to shape what happens eight days after that when we hear from the Federal Reserve and Chairman Powell. Uh, but nonetheless, you got markets taking a little bit of a breather this morning as we back off to a little bit of negative price action. All things considered, though, folks, context. Context is important in so many things in life. Now, again, you're getting a futures rollover here, okay, on the Thinkorswim platform. You can see that you roll over from where you were on Friday. You're talking about a different contract now, that different contract, a little bit higher price because you're going further out into the future, okay? Futures, right? So we are negative by a third of a percent. You do have NVIDIA shares trading down monumentally from its high, but that's what your three-year weekly currently looks like, folks, okay? We did get actually a red bar on a weekly basis haven't had many of those which is pretty remarkable as in the prior week we closed at 51.38 this one we closed at 51.32 even after opening at 51.42 so you got a 10 point red bar on a weekly basis only the third third one we've had this year and only the third red weekly bar that we have had since that run began in late october now as i mentioned you do start out higher on this next bar that we have as in the weekly bar that begins today but keep in mind, the only reason that we're starting higher on that weekly bar in the futures is because we got a rollover. So you actually have a red bar already. We opened at 51.95 and we're 20 points in the red at 51.75 in the S&Ps. As we got CPI coming out tomorrow and those numbers, just taking a look, yeah. So CPI month over month, 0.4%. Core, they're looking for 0.3. On a yearly basis, okay, the headline is looking for 3.1. 
and the core is looking for 3.7. Keep your eye on the monthlies, though. They're going to dig into the details, of course. How services, how's core services doing on that number in terms of prices? And yeah, we're less than 24 hours away from that number. All right, how about Boeing? <clears throat> so, Boeing's got a criminal investigation going on. They cannot locate, look at this chart, man, 203. You close at 198, we're down to 194. We got a couple things going on for Boeing, man. Uh, first of all, yeah, how about this deal, man? At least 50 people were injured on a Boeing 787 9 flight from Sydney to Auckland, operated by Chilean Airlines, uh, LATAM, LATAM, not familiar. Uh, a technical incident, yeah, a technical issue called strong movement on board the flight and led to a sudden loss of altitude. It just doesn't stop. But guess what we're gonna get into later, man. They got a criminal investigation going on. They cannot locate, folks, the records that had to do with that door popping out of the vehicle. I was chatting with my dad yesterday, right? And it, so I'm watching Bloomberg this morning. I can't remember who said it, um, but they said it was embarrassing, right? And I was like, man, it's almost like they're in a spin shop for it, because it's not embarrassing at all. They were painting it in that comment is, oh, it's so embarrassing. They can't find these records. Like, how could they lose them, right? Who says they lost them, okay? Who says that they weren't just destroyed or something like that, right? Who says, I don't know. Uh, but when you're talking about criminal, okay, criminal, keep in mind, does not mean that you did something by accident, just like losing a few records. Criminal means it was actually criminal intent, and that's what they're looking for. And when you can't find the records in that type of a deal, it's actually pointing to the fact that they think there could be a possible cover-up. And so keep that one in your mind, man, because, boy, if this thing ever blows out again in terms of you get some massive cover up and that's why the, you know, things are popping out of the, the fuselages of planes in the middle of the air. Thank goodness nobody was hurt in that event, man. If anybody's sitting right next to that plane, let alone a child. OK, I've flown with Tommy. I've flown with Tommy to to Europe in a plane. Yes. Keep those kids in their seatbelts, folks. But still, when you got kids in your seatbelts, you get a door that gets ripped out of an airplane. Pretty remarkable that nobody was injured in that event. Nonetheless, criminal investigation going on for Boeing, having to do with the door that, door that popped out of their plane on January. And then you got last night um, another plane having a technical difficulty um, after a technical problem causes a sudden drop in altitude. Yeah, that article is out from two hours ago, folks, that news. So that is another recent event that we're dealing with as it just keeps coming and keeps piling on. And I'm not sure where the pain is going to end for Boeing. But nonetheless, Boeing shares today, you're going to open down another $4. You take a look at a little bit of a longer term chart. And what are you looking at? You're looking at 180 on this chart, man. OK, 180 is where this thing fell apart in April of 2022, where you drove to 100. 180 is also where you bounced back in October with the market lows. Now, keep in mind. Do you remember where the market was at that point, just in terms of the, the devastation that Boeing has eclipsed during that time? You had the market trading at 4,100. You're trading almost 1,100 points higher right now. Meanwhile, Boeing is coming back to test that area. You're trading at 193. You got a bid with 193 today, and that is the 180 price point for Boeing. Um, but be careful, man, because I'm not saying, you know, it's a, it's a ambiguous phrase. Be careful. But I did find myself, even hearing the reporting of Bloomberg, which I love talking about, nobody was talking about it's criminal. They can't find records that they should obviously have. Maybe there's some allegations of a cover-up. That wasn't even being discussed. I'm not saying it happened, but it's certainly a possibility when you have a criminal investigation and you have the company unable to find records that they should. Nonetheless, we got a lot to talk about. We'll talk about some CPI numbers when we get back, folks. Stay tuned, we'll be back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. As we await the opening bell, 11 minutes from right now, you got markets climbing a little bit. We're back to just negative by 14 points. That's a quarter percent in the S&Ps. You get the NASDAQ 100, negative by a third of a percent. We jump around to some of the biggest equities out there. Apple shares, you're going to open in the positive. Apple been struggling recently. You're going to open about a buck fifty to the upside, 172.30 for Apple shares. Biggest company in the world, Microsoft. Trading down about $2 to 404. Pretty remarkable how well Microsoft held up. NVIDIA, man, could be the canary in the coal mine, as in, boy, that was a rip roaring rally to negative prices on Friday. And even the equities that it carried higher, right? The likes of Microsoft, their partner, of course. Um, not partner, I shouldn't say that. But Microsoft with AI, with ChatGPT, so uh, correlated to what's happened with NVIDIA, the run Microsoft has had to the biggest, most valuable company in the world as NVIDIA has made its run. Microsoft is trading right back where you were on Thursday versus NVIDIA shares. Uh, Thursday, you open at 900. So slightly below that price point, 869. You can jump over to Google shares. Google, there's a bid for you. Up by about 70 pennies to 137.03. Pretty remarkable where they are in terms of where you were on Friday. Actually above Friday's open. Not, not the case in many equities. Meta shares this morning. They give it up as well on Friday, and they give it up a little bit today. You're negative by about $7. Tesla shares this morning. Trading basically flat at 175.34. We jump over to Netflix to round it out. Netflix shares up about $5 to 609. So we talk a little bit of CPI. We talk a little bit of yields. Yields. The 10 year right now, basically flat. We jump over to the dollar index. You got the dollar rising a bit to 102.82. Bank of Japan is going to be in focus. And that's been one of the things driving this gold contract. You're at 150.50 as of not even a week ago. We're trading at 146.80. Seems like they're going to be hiking for the first time since 2007, right? Whew. First time since 2007. 
And yeah, that was quite a weekly reversal bar. And you're talking about a triple top here. And boy, it is pretty remarkable how the market gets ahead of itself sometimes, right? You were at 152 almost in October of 2022. If you're trading gold, you got to keep your eye on the currencies, man. You drive down to 127.50, you make it right back up to that same price point, man. Look at that. Within three pennies, folks, three pennies, your high was 151.90. You realistically could have said, you know what, I'm waiting till we get five pennies away from that high of 2022, and you you would have got that sell, which is remarkable. You drive down to 140, and no, things reset again, but guess what? It might be real this time. As you drive down from 150 to 146.82, and boy, if you ever get a real move, I mean, look at the moves that are possible, and remember what gold just did on this first move, okay? Because if you think the yen is going to come down to even 140, or you think it's coming down to the 130 or 127 area, you better watch out for gold trading to the upside in pretty dramatic fashion if you get a move like that. Now, you want you want something else. You got to go back even further, man, right? I mean, 120 is totally in the ballpark. You're only talking about going back to, what, 2015, 2006. I'm not talking about 75, okay? I'm talking about getting back to some of the lower levels that you were at outside of these spike highs of 152. And it would make sense that that may be the case and what did I just say? They may hack for the first time since 2007. Look what happened the last time, right? We'll get into that more in the next week or two. But keep your eye on that dollar yen as we talk about yields, as we talk about gold, and we talk about the market. And with that, we jump back to our focus, which is going to be on the CPI tomorrow. Now, this article from Bloomberg out there, these bond traders, you better believe they were watching inflation, man. Bond traders, I key U.S. I key US inflation report to game out next bets. And what this article talks about here, this one's out, yeah, yesterday afternoon, I was reading it last night, ambiguous February market, excuse me, ambiguous February labor market reports put the focus on the CPI. And what it's saying is that we've had a lot of conflicting data, and this has been the case through the pandemic, as in, there's always been a little bit of something for everybody to make your case, whether inflation's hot, is it soft, is it headline, is it core, is it services, is it whatever sector you're talking about, right? So we've had some conflicting data, as in you have what? The jobs data for February, we added 275,000 jobs. That beat the number of 200. Well, you'd say, geez, things are too hot. The Fed has to be careful. Not so fast. We had the unemployment rate rising to 3.9%, right? We had wages not going up as fast as the market wanted. So a little bit conflicting data, but we get CPI, we get PPI, and the market's gonna be paying attention, man. Now. Last month's CPI was a very hot number. So the expectations for this number, okay, the importance of this number is even greater because if you come in hot again, that's gonna be two, two months. I don't know if that's gonna be the case. We will find out. As I mentioned, you're talking about 0.4% on a month over month basis. And that's the number we'll be looking for tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning. This is the last major piece of economic data before the Fed meets March 20th. They're not gonna do anything nine days from right now on March 20th. They do put out a dot plot though, okay? So we're gonna get some updates in terms of where they think we're gonna be going as you go through the year in terms of cuts. Swaps currently imply around 98 basis points of cuts by the end of 2024. And that number was at about 75 basis points. Last month, we've gone up again, okay? Yeah, this is just yields in general. Quick glimpse of how the market has gotten ahead of itself a couple times, right? We were at October. That's when the market was at the doldrums. You accelerate to a yield of 3.75% almost, somewhere in that ballpark on the 10-year. The market rode higher on lower yields. Not so fast, said the market, to put it lightly. Uh, we also get some auctions of debt, U.S. Treasury. They're going to sell $61 billion in 10 and 30-year debt through auctions on Tuesday and Wednesday. So look for some headlines there. You got some hot takes in here just talking about the importance of this data point like I was talking about. The Fed's target, the price index for personal consumption expenditure, the PCE, okay? They're not going to get that one yet. The central bank currently sees a 2.8% core PCE rate, okay? And this is what they're looking for. It likely wants that to come down to 2.5%, but the market gets ahead of everything. So get ready for some action tomorrow morning. That's the point of this conversation, really, okay? And I, I agree with 
this gentleman, Kevin Flanagan, head of fixed income strategy at Wisdom Tree. Not familiar with him, okay, but I do agree. When you look at the calendar, that means a couple more reports, okay? He explained that while the central bank currently sees a 2.8% core PCE, it likely wants to come down to 25 that means a couple more reports, but guess what? The bond market's not going to wait for the core PCE. It's going to respond to the CPI, and that's going to determine whether the rally continues. Yeah, and the numbers they're going to be looking for, as I said, headline number, year over year, 3.1%, and on the core, they're going to look for 3.7%. When you look at month over month, 0.4%. And I believe the core is going to be 0.3%. Yeah. Heading into next week, CPI would need to be off the charts to deter the view that 2004 is actually not opening up as strong as some feared and that January's strength was not indicative of reality. So we get to find out, man. We'll talk about some of other action we have going on in the calendar this week. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at some other equities as well. We're coming back for the opening bell. S&P is negative by 17. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. you got an S&P opening the trading week off down about 12 points, trading at 51.80 right now. NASDAQ 100, you're off about a third of a percent, negative by 65 points, 18,234. Remember, folks, we got a futures rollover here. So even though we're above where you closed on Friday, not the case when, when you look at the cash, okay? Excuse me, Dow off 105 right now at 39,085 on the Russell. 
excuse me, negative by four. We check in on Boeing shares. Yeah, we're continuing to drop. I'm not the only one that's saying, man, it just does not stop for Boeing shares. There were 50 people injured in that recent event that I talked about. We had a technical difficulty. Talk about technical difficulties causing that. Was it 787? Or was it? Let's get it right for those that weren't listening. 787.9 Dreamliner. 50 people injured in strong movement. And the headline there had to do with a technical event. Look at that. I, was just, I just searched 787 Dreamliner. Yeah, it's everywhere, folks. Boeing woes continue. 50 injured, 50 injured, 50 injured. Technical event. Um, yeah, be careful on Boeing shares, let alone the criminal investigation, because they got no records of anything going on. It's remarkable, to put it lightly, what is going on with that company, man. And for the longest time, I thought maybe, you know, there's only two, pl two companies that build airplanes in the world, folks. Boeing and Airbus. America needs a company that is American that builds airplanes. Boeing is not going out of business, okay? That's the conundrum, though. And maybe that's a little bit of the problem that's created this, knowing that uh, they're going to have a backstop to a certain degree. But just keep your eye on this chart, man, because it seems like 150 or even lower than that could be in the cards when you got a steep fall off like this and you just got to keep happening over and over and over for Boeing, for Boeing shares. We check in on some of the other equities. Apple gets a little bit of a rise, up 1.4% right now. We check in on NVIDIA. That's quite a haircut, man. NVIDIA shares trading right now down 2.6%. You're now down another $23. You jump over to NVIDIA. Yeah, we can't even put it on a monthly. You can't even see the run. You got to put it on a weekly. Uh, is interesting that... For the longest time, I was looking, maybe this thing makes it up to 800, and that would be an A to B, C to D, blew right through that. But just like that, we're almost back to the 800. Maybe we're going to fill that gap. You put it on a daily, and yeah, you got a couple gaps in there, right? There's one gap you had from March 1st. Is that even a gap? What's your high there? 744. What's your low there? 742. So maybe you come back to that area, 743. That's their last earnings. You traded lower into those numbers. They beat those earnings. You accelerate higher. Maybe 740s in the cards. Still, $800 puts this company at $2 trillion. Keep that in mind. So you're talking about quite a number in terms of where NVIDIA shares are at right now and where they may be. All right, we got our man. He's on the phone. It's Monday morning. The markets are open at 930, and we got Mike from Somerville on the line. Mike, good morning. And how are you, Tommy, from Florida? I'm doing fantastic. I'm Tommy from Boston, man. I'm Tommy from Florida now, but I'm Tommy from Boston. Why not? Are you uh, Tommy from Boston? I, I'm from Florida, I guess. But people ask me where I'm from. I say I live in Florida, for, but I'm from Boston. That's what I say. Yeah. Where were you born? So what are we looking at, Mike? Where were you born, Boston or Florida? Sorry, say it for me again one more time, man. I lost you. Where were you born? Boston or South Florida? South Boston, baby. Boston. I was born in Boston. Oh, yeah. I was there all my life, man. I went to college. I went to college in Philadelphia, Villanova, which I love. Moved back to Boston because I knew if I was going to stay in a big city, man, love Philadelphia, but nothing like Boston. Moved back to Boston. All right. And then uh, followed my, my dad down to beautiful Florida. And I love it down there, man. You know, the, the weather's just amazing. I can't, you know, I love the city of Boston. Miss it tremendously. But, but boy, those cold, gray, stormy uh, winters are pretty tough. Um, nonetheless. So, Listen, Tom, what do we, we got, got going on? We got a beautiful on? sunny day happening here today. We're, we're breaking here. We're breaking spring here. It's coming. Uh, listen, I, I March, when you get those beautiful days, I remember them. I remember them as a kid, man. Once it, once it got above 60, 65 degrees, man, I was in shorts and a T-shirt with my uh, street hockey stick and ball out in the yard playing for sure. So, I remember it, man. All right. All right. Look at The reason why I'm calling you is we got Oracle's earnings coming out tonight, buddy. Okay. What are you doing with this? Well, I, I, I bought it the other day. I got stopped out, and I just bought it back this morning. Okay. So we got Oracle shares. You're flat right now. We put it on a daily. We're trading at 112.47. This thing's been chopping around for a bit. Um, as the market's traded higher, you put this on the monthly. All right, you back it up. We had highs all the way back in 2021, about 100 bucks. You got all-time highs on 127. Now, what, what made you take a look at this, just out of curiosity, Mike, Oracle? What put this on your all radar? Right, Anything? All right, my man Eric gave me this, and he had pretty good thinking. So every all the big boys have been coming out, and they've all jumped up. And we were looking for a big boy that might do something on earnings. That's why we did it, buddy. Okay, nice. So are you trading this with 
options? Are you just buying the equity, or no. what are you doing? No, just buying the equity. I don't have. I don't even know how to trade an option. Never did it. I like. I like to learn how, but I've never done it. Well, you got to check out Fast Market Man at twelve o'clock with our man Kevin Hinks and Tom White from Think or Swim. I, I say, you know, they're a sponsor man. They've been for a while, and I've learned so much. But that program for options, and the reason why I say it, Mike, is because options the way they're priced can give you so much good information about the equity right so i jump over to the thinkorswim platform right now just for some quick context okay we're looking at the numbers of let's just look at the options that close for friday okay. right to give you an idea at least of the type of movement that you might have on this equity with their numbers coming out as you mentioned okay we're trading at 112 and this equity has about a 10 dollar move this week priced in for implied volatility in either direction. So basically what that's saying, okay. Mike, is the market thinks you could have about $10 of movement in either direction, right, on, on yes. the heels of their numbers. So that's the first thing. If you're trading the equity, you at least, it's good to have that type of an idea, right? Okay, I'm buying it at 112. The market's telling me you better be able to accept at least $10 because that's just what it's implying in either direction versus we know we I get agree. moves much, much bigger than that, right? So then you look yep. at the chart. Man, we got gaps all over this chart, and they have to do with earnings a lot of the time. So you're probably going to get some movement, man. You back it up to their last earnings event, that was not a good one. You drop from about 114, which is where we were right now, down to about 100. Uh, we had some volume, as you always do in the earnings. The, vo the earnings before that was September. We drop off, but then the one before that was June, and you traded higher. Now, as you mentioned, this thing is underperformed to a certain degree. Um, you know, you make the highs on 127, which is back in June of last year. And then we had the fall off basically on two different earnings events. So they need a little bit of, of pickup here, man. Um, Hold you on, know, Tom. It's, that was part of our reason for buying it because I've been following it. And I remember the earnings weren't good last, last time. So we were hoping they were going to get their ship in order for this earnings. Yeah. Um, you know, listen, it's, it's, uh, I don't see anything on this chart, Mike, that gives me some action to be a buyer right now, especially when you have something like a NVIDIA trading so dramatically lower. It's That's just going to be a little bit of a hamper on the market in general, right? Uh, you got the NASDAQ okay. 100 slightly lower. You have the market pretty high right now. Um, yeah. But their, their last two earnings events, just so the last two earnings events have been pretty tough. So they had a tough earnings event in September of 2023. And then they had another tough one in December. So this is going to be the third one. Hang with us, all right? Can you hang with us while all we finish right. this up? I want all right, to hang, hang with in. us, Definitely. folks. We'll yep. finish up the conversation on Oracle when we get back with our man Mike from Somerville. Enjoying that beautiful day in Boston. Got to love it. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 14. Market just kind of chopping around where we pick things up. You have NVIDIA shares down about $7 right now. That's only 0.7% in the negative. You get a little bit of a pop, actually, from where we were. And we're talking to a man, Mike, from Somerville. And we're talking a little right. bit of Oracle. Yes. We, we got Eric. We got Eric O'Connell. He's in now. He's, he's in. He's listening now. I love it. All right, Mr. O'Connell. Welcome to the program, man. Welcome to the Tiger uh, family. So, you know, taking a look at this thing, man, I, I'd be careful here, Mike and, and Eric. Um, the expectation has been high, and they've been underperforming. And I backed it up to their last earnings. So on the chart here, December 11th, you came into their last earnings almost at this exact same price point, which is remarkable. You were at about 114 bucks when they came in. You traded down to 100. Their numbers in the last quarter weren't a huge miss. What they missed was they missed on a few sections of their earnings. So this article I got, I got an article up here, Mike. I'm not sure if you're watching Tiger TV, but this one's from their last earnings, okay? It's from December 11th. And they actually beat on their earnings, okay? They beat a buck 34 versus a buck 32. They just missed slightly on revenue, but the problem was they missed in the areas that the market cares about, which is services. They missed 1.37 billion versus 1.4. You had um, revenue from cloud services missing slightly, 9.64 versus 9.71. You had a couple others as well. So the bar is high right now, and the market's a little bit worried, I think, for Oracle um, when they come out, man. And I would be careful. I mean, you look at this, we've had a series of lower lows and lower highs. That's the thing that struck me most, just putting it on a daily. You back it up to where it is last June, just adding a simple bar on this thing, man. You're talking about lower lows and lower highs to the upside. You're coming into that upper boundary right now. And they have a they have a little bit of a problem, I think, man. Um, you, you know, I'm not sure. What you said earlier about the options, so that Eric can hear what you said. Um, I sure can, so man. I'm we'll please. recap it. So listen, Thinkorswim platform. You can always sign up and get a demo account, folks, if if you don't have one. And I say it because it's just great information. You jump over to the options chains. You take a look at which week you're looking at, okay? And so for this week, the options that expire March 15th, it is telling you that there is a ten dollar and seventy four cent move priced into this equity in either direction. And basically what that means is, is if you want to buy a call at the market, it's going to cost you about $5.50. You want to buy a put, it's going to cost you $5.50. So if you buy them both, you have exposure in both directions and you need almost a $10 move to make your money back. Now that's all about earnings because you go out an extra week and it's only 60 cents more. You go out an extra week, it's only 60 cents more. $10 is having to do with the earnings. So be prepared for a $10 movement in either direction. And I think the chart would show you that's probably pretty reasonable in terms of the moves that this equity has had on their prior numbers. 
So, you know, if you're willing to take a 10% move in either direction, you think you get some action, maybe they have been underperforming. Um, but why have they been underperforming when the this this area has been on fire, right? We've had winners and losers, but, you know, some of those areas have been on fire. And meanwhile, we got Oracle down from 127 to 112 since last June, which is quite a haircut. And you're when I just best, look Tommy. at it you're fundamentally... Best, you couldn't explain it any better, buddy. Thank you. Hey. Mike, thanks so much for the call. Eric, thanks so much for listening. And uh, we'll see what happens with those numbers, man. The time will tell. Um, we'll make a decision, the call. buddy, before the end of the day today. We'll make a right. decision. I appreciate the call as always, Mike. Have a great day. Enjoy that beautiful weather up there, man. Thanks, pal. Take care. Thanks so much for the call. Folks, give us a call, 877-927-6648. Listen, I'm just giving you my best take, man. Who knows? You know, you got to make your decisions out there. This thing could pop. We don't know. It's probably going to move one way or the other when they come into those numbers. Um, but, yeah, a little bit of a struggle recently. And when I did back it up to their last earnings, pretty tough with what they're going to be going for. Now, I should have mentioned, if you're still listening out there, Mr. Eric O'Connell, love the O's. Those good O'Brien, uh, O'Brien, the O's, the Irish. Um, Eric O'Connell, that's a good Irish name. Edmund O'Brien, that's a good Irish name, too. Uh, the numbers they're looking for, okay, for Oracle this quarter, that ended in February, a buck thirty-eight a share on revenue of about thirteen point three one billion. Okay, and that is comparing to a year ago of a buck twenty-two a year, uh, buck twenty-two a share on about twelve point four billion. So they're looking for some rises, as you saw with the last numbers, though, right? They were pretty close to the headline numbers when they came out in December, but the market is looking deeper. They're looking for those areas of growth that other equities have been achieving. And it seems like Oracle has not been able to do that, which is why they've been underperforming, to put it lightly. When you back up the NASDAQ 100 to where we were last June, you were trading almost 20% below where we're at right now. And meanwhile, you got Oracle shares. Last June was trading up uh, about 10% above where you were right now on that price point. Pretty remarkable. All right, what else have we got going on in this market? Let's jump around to some of the headlines we had pulled up. Yeah, just, just reiterating kind of what what Chairman Powell had said in terms of where we are, okay? Let me get that quote for you. This one. All right, I'll find that one at the next break. Chairman Powell seems like they're pretty close, man. It seems like they're pretty close. They probably need a couple more months. June's in focus right now. We get the next Fed meeting coming down the line about nine days, not about nine days from right now. All right, this one's an interesting one, man. You want a little bit of tail risk in the market? <laughs> okay, this one from Bloomberg. When's this one out? Yet? Okay, that should be better. So this is talking about selling volatility, okay? Forget the AI frenzy. The most exciting trade on Wall Street might just be betting on boring. Well, what happens if boring? You got me, Al? Let me know if you got me. I think you got me now. Uh, what happens if boring twists? Okay, perfect. Now, check this out. Short volatility bets, all right? Now, this is... They were a key factor in the stock market plunge in 2018 when they wiped out in epic fashion. Their new form largely takes the shape of ETFs that sell options on stock and indexes in order to juice returns. How about $64 billion in the last two years these assets have quadrupled to? All right, you take a look at this number. Assets in options, income, ETFs go from basically nothing in 2020 to $64 billion dollars. Yeah, absolutely remarkable, okay? It's the short vol trade, and its impact is the most consistent question we've gotten this year. And this is talking about, this is a gentleman, uh, co-head of derivatives at Susquehanna is that nice? International Group. Clients want to know how much of an impact it's having on markets. Now, part of what they're talking about here is that people betting on this is actually adding more calm to the markets. But guess what? You can only hold that thing so tight until it reverberates and slams back. $64 billion, okay, is in there. They do make the case that it's not all wagering on, on 
volatility, the income ETFs are generally using options on top of a long stock position, so it might not be as volatile as prior. But I'm just going to leave you with one little tidbit. How much do we got? Good. We got 20 seconds into this break. Okay. Come on. Give me those numbers. Yeah. When this collapse, folks, in... All right. I'll, fit, I'll, I'll show you how quickly this can all evaporate. Hang with me during the break because you're talking about some risk here. To put it lightly, we'll finish it up when we get back. We'll talk a little bit of the VIX. We get the VIX. There's a spike for you. 1571. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And yeah, how about the VIX, right? Pay attention to the VIX, folks. You got quite an elevated VIX right now. You're actually above where you were at the highs of Friday, and that was quite an acceleration on Friday as you had the market turning lower. You had NVIDIA rip roaring lower. Now, remember, the VIX is predicated off of the premium of S&P, okay? It's not predicated off the NASDAQ or the Dow or the Russell. It's off of the S&P. We're at 1577 right now. And it's interesting what's happening in light of this article I was talking about. Now, you back things up on a monthly. And I'm just going to bring things back to show you 2018. There is February of 2018, okay, where volatility spiked for the first time in a while. Look at this volatility that we had for the prior two years, right? You had volatility decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. We hit a low at 856. Everybody was in the market. They're sucking up that volatility, right? They're making easy money, they think. And then, boom, 
the VIX blows up to 50 in a month. Well, what happens to some of those funds when you are in the game making pennies on the dollar? Well, what happens is, okay, the most famous episode took place in February of 2018, and this is illustrating what can happen when you're in these types of vehicles, okay, that are absorbing volatility premium, okay, you had a downturn in the S&P 500. Now, for real quick analysis, man, this was not some catastrophic failure in the markets. There's your February of 2018 bar, folks. You had a high of 2,800 and you had a low of 2,500, okay? Yeah, you were down 10 or 12%. It was quite a pullback. You had the VIX spiking to 50, which is all that matters when you're talking about the VIX. But nonetheless, look what happened to some of the funds, okay? Wiping out billions in dollars of trades, betting against volatility that had built up during years of relative calm. We're in a similar situation right now. And this is what the article's talking about. Among the biggest casualties were the Velocity Shares Daily Inverse VIX short-term note, the XIV, whose assets shrank from 1.9 billion to 63 million in a single session. That's a tough one. And now we got ETFs running at about 64 billion. Okay, so keep your eye on that one, man. Keep your eye on a VIX. On a day when we get the VIX spiking a bit with a not seeing negative action, just pay attention to that one, folks. Keep it on your radar. 1.9 billion to 60 some on million in a day. And yeah, we'll see where we go. Folks, thanks so much for kicking your trading week off right here with me. And stay tuned. We got Basil Chapman coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Live programming after that. Have a great Monday, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.